Hello, and welcome to the series webinar series. Today, we will be talking about water treatment for cannabis grows. If you're watching this webinar, you may be wondering if you need to make any adjustments to the water that you are using to feed your plants. Let's start with two major water quality misconceptions. Misconception number one, all water is the same. This could not be further from the truth. Water quality varies tremendously from location to location, and all of these variations in water quality have different effects on your plants. Misconception number two, potable water, or the water that you drink from your faucet, is also adequate for plants. This is also not true. Plants and humans have different water quality needs to thrive. This is why a cultivation facility's incoming water, regardless of whether it's from a well or from a local municipality, should be tested by a trusted analytical lab. Once you have tested the water and gotten the results, you can begin to assess how the contaminants in your water might affect the plants. Contaminants will commonly be measured in parts per million, or PPM for short, which is equivalent to one milligram of contaminant per liter of liquid. Important measurements can be categorized into general parameters, inorganic, organic, and biological contaminants. pH is used to measure the acidity and alkalinity of a fluid and is measured on a scale from zero, acidic, to 14, basic. EC, or electroconductivity, is the ability of a water to conduct an electrical current. Salinity and total dissolved solids, or TDS, are used to calculate the EC of water, which helps to indicate the water's purity. TDS is measured of to total dissolved solids and is an indication of water's hardness level, which is measurement of dissolved minerals such as calcium and magnesium in the water. The main concern with high levels of hardness is the scaling that will occur on the exposed infrastructure. It is also important to consider these concentrations of minerals in the development of your nutrient recipe. Chemicals, which are often found in municipal water for disinfection purposes, can build up in the soil and create browning, yelling, or scorched looking leaves that will eventually fall off completely. Dis disinfection byproducts, pesticides, solvents, and volatile organic carbons are all organic contaminants that exist in our waterways that can have unknown effects on plant health. And last, microbiologicals. They're not only dangerous for human consumption, they can have disastrous effects on plants in the form of disease such as root rot. Groundwater and surface water sources often contain a range of biological contaminants like bacteria and viruses. Now that you have a better idea of what unwanted contaminants you have in your water, you can begin to evaluate your water treatment options. There are many water treatment technologies that can be considered, some in combination, to create the optimal grow system. The two main water treatment options found in the cannabis industry include reverse osmosis, or RO, and ozone treatment. RO systems are currently the most popular for cannabis cultivators. These systems work by pushing water molecules through a semi-permeable membrane, filtering out most contaminants. Ozone is an unstable gas comprising of three oxygen atoms and is readily used in domestic and industrial water treatments, but has recently been used to benefit many grow operations. Ozone is generated when energy is added to oxygen, breaking apart the O2 molecules into unstable oxygen atoms. These oxygen atoms combine to form O3 molecules, which destroy the unwanted contaminants. Here's a sample of what you'll commonly find for a water treatment system in the commercial cannabis facility. Incoming water will go through some sort of sand or carbon filter, water softening to reduce the hardness, and RO to remove all other constituents for storage. The purified water will then be dosed with nutrients according to the specific grow recipes before going to cultivation. You'll notice this diagram, there is an RO or waste stream coming out of the RO system. This is one of the major drawbacks of the RO system. RO purified water, often called the permeate, is the product of the desalination process. The byproduct is the brine also called concentrate, reject water, or waste stream. This waste stream can be up to 50% of the incoming stream, so RO systems are not water efficient. 
Additionally, this stream will be highly concentrated with salts, nutrients, metals, and other inorganic materials. Municipalities often consider this stream a toxic liquid. Because of this, discharge of this stream can be very difficult. For example, discharging may require permits, further treatment, or additional infrastructure requiring a lot of space, all of which come at a high cost. Additionally, this brine can wreak havoc on the local environment and disposal infrastructure. In addition to these burdens, RO systems have a very high operational energy demand. In comparison to RO, ozone does not have the brine disposal requirements, has a much lower operational energy, and has the added benefit of increasing the dissolved oxygen in fertigation water. Most growers understand the vital importance of DO in the root zone of plants. Beneficial levels of DO start at around 8 mg per liter. The saturation point of oxygen water depends on the temperature and salinity of the water, but mostly does not exceed 15 mg per liter. Ozone in water allows us to exceed this level by supersaturating the water with oxygen. Because ozone, or O3, is 13 times more soluble in water than O2, we, we are able to pump much greater levels of oxygen into the water in the form of ozone, which quickly reverts back to O2, but at a supersaturated level. In addition to the higher DO levels, ozone systems can be used to clean the lines, which will heavily reduce maintenance costs and replacement rates of components. Here at Ceres, we believe a water treatment system should be designed to produce optimal water quality for your plants, while also reducing costs and environmental impacts. Here is a sample flow diagram of one of our innovative solutions. This system not only treats incoming water, but also treats and reuses the nutrient waste and condensate water from the facility in a zero or minimal waste solution. Thank you for listening to this presentation. If you have any questions or for more information, please see the link to visit our website in the notes below. Thank you and good luck.